Hey guys, Thunder E here, and with me I have the brand new Galaxy Z Fold 4, and welcome to your gaming video on this bad boy. Now, the Z Fold 4 is an update to the Z Fold 3, and it's brought in some really new and unique features. Now, before we go ahead, I want to give a big shout out to our sponsor of this video, Spigen, who are also a channel sponsor. You guys know we love to use their cases and the accessories. So stay tuned because I have a few things new from them that we'll showcase in this video. And if you join us for the first time, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And uh, of course, follow us on the channel to watch more content like this. So the brand new Galaxy Z Fold 4. If this is your first time looking at a foldable, Samsung was the one that started the foldable trend. And the Z Fold 4 looks very similar to the Z Fold 3. Now, in terms of new changes, Samsung says they've improved the hinge to make it smaller. And it does look kind of smaller there, but it still looks very similar. And the cover display is also slightly wider. It's all in millimeters, I could give you the numbers. Now, the cover display is 6.2 inches, but when you open it up, you do get, of course, the main display, which is 7.6 inches and does feel a little wider when using the game doesn't feel as cramped. So when I'm moving around uh, on screen while I'm gaming, that feels really smooth. Now, that display is 120 hertz. Of course, you've got adaptive refresh rate on there. So allowing you to go from, of course, one hertz to 120 and take full advantage of that while gaming. This device is powered by the brand new Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. Now we've seen this in other devices and Snapdragon has really done a lot to improve on this piece of hardware, which is great to see it in the fold uh, because I thought maybe Samsung might not put it in this device. It, you know, something that, hey, they might just skip, but hey, they said, look, we're gonna put it here because we wanna, want some performance and we want to see it push through. And that is backed by 12 gigs of RAM and this starts at 256 gigabytes of storage. Now, speaking of charging, this does uh, fast charging up to 15 watts for wireless charging and 25 watts for fast charging. As you expect, Samsung doesn't provide any uh, charging within the box, so there's no charger, which is why our channel sponsor comes into play, and that is Spigen with their ArcStation uh, charger. It's a 27 watt charger, and this works perfectly for your Galaxy Z Fold 4. It's a USB Type-C charger, very small, it's super portable, and that, of course, you can take with you anywhere. And they've also got a wireless charging stand specifically built to accommodate the Galaxy Z Fold 4, whether it's upright or sideways, it's the Arcfield wireless charger, and this is built for this device to take advantage of it. The maximum charging wattage is 15 watts. So if you've got a Galaxy Z Fold, this is perfect for you. Uh, again, the stand is nice. It's got a really nice feel to it. And it also comes with a really long cable so you can place it anywhere around your desk or within your home. So I definitely love those two. And I think it's definitely necessary when you're using this device. So let's go into, of course, some of that gaming as we would expect, right? And the first game that takes full advantage of that actually is Call of Duty Mobile. So we fired up Call of Duty Mobile and it has the it has the ultra mode. Basically, this allows you to exceed that 60 uh, frames per second cap. And we got about 88 frames per second while playing Call of Duty Mobile, which was great. It's something you don't usually get. And I'm glad to see it here and I was able to enjoy that. You saw this just looks really smooth. Now, granted, I didn't resize my my uh, control layout, but it, again, it was a nice gameplay experience. And confirming, of course, with Game Bench, we got 88 frames per second. Now, when we move over to, of course, uh, Apex Legends, uh, this, uh, we're still getting about 40 frames per second on the, of course, standard uh, gameplay mode. We can, of course, get slightly higher up to 60, but we got a solid 40 frames per second, and this is very indicative of what we've seen with Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, and also Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 as well. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some more fine tuning with this, but the game ran smooth pretty well. I had to stop because I couldn't actually finish my gameplay session for this uh, for this game. Now, when we move over uh, to PUBG Mobile, PUBG Mobile again, looking at the two gameplay modes we usually play, Ultra HD Ultra, we got a solid 40 frames per second and uh, you know, game played well and pretty smooth. And then when we played on Smooth Extreme, we got a solid 60 frames per second there as well. So which means, again, the games you like to play, you're going to get 
that kind of performance and gameplay. Now, some of you are gonna be asking me what about emulators and stuff like that. I just didn't have time to do that, but I will drop a video on Board Gamer for you, especially guys who are looking just for emulators. So go ahead and check it over there on the channel over this weekend. I should have that for you. Going over to Genshin Impact. This is a game, of course, that we know is poorly optimized and we've seen different readings. And of course, the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 does a better job on this. Now, in about 25 minutes of gameplay, we got about 45 frames per second. For the first 10 minutes of gameplay, we got about 55 to 58 frames per second. So it's still stat high, but this is where we decided to do our temperature checks. Now, while gaming, playing Genshin Impact, we're getting temperatures up to 110 degrees on the backside close to the camera, while we're getting about 105 degrees on screen. So that was running rather hot. And again, Samsung used to lead the area in cooling, and I am quite disappointed here because honestly, the OnePlus 10T did a much better job in cooling its device uh, at temperatures lower than 110, I think it was about 106 or so uh, compared to this. Now, while we're playing the other games I mentioned earlier, we're getting temperatures of between 95 to 99 uh, degrees. So again, Genshin, of course, is something that pushes it, but we're not really happy with the cooling we're seeing uh, right here. So when you have a device like the Galaxy Z Fold 4, you've got a huge, huge, massive real estate for you to do a lot of gaming on, right? Which is pretty cool, but can you do more things than game at the same time? Now you've got different options here. You've got the ability to, to actually open up your games as a pop-up, so you can actually use your screen to do something else. Now, of course, this will be more beneficial if you're using, say, a Bluetooth controller uh, to game. That will make the most amount of sense or you can also do split screen as well. So I can open up Twitter and have PUBG playing, but again, you're gonna either have to use a Bluetooth controller or you can resize it, but that gives you the opportunity to have multiple things going on at the same time. The one thing we'll note that the split screen is split from left to right, not top to bottom. So you will have to slide uh, the slider either way to actually expand or decrease the screen size for what you're trying to do. Now, of course, the feature is still there to switch over to cover display. You can game on the cover display and it, some games will allow you to actually start within the main display and switch over to the cover display, uh, which is nice. Uh, so games like uh, PUBG will do that. And I believe uh, Genshin Impact also does that. Not every game supports that feature, but it's something there. And the cover display feels a bit more comfortable this time around. So that's actually pretty good. Now, speaking of discomfort and feel, uh, the device feels a little slimmer and lighter. Uh, it, you know, just while you're holding it, either closed or open, but I definitely would prefer having this protected with something. And again, our sponsors uh, of the channel, Speaking, they have some really cool stuff. They have the Slim Armor Pro. And the difference with this case, this here, is that it's got uh, a, an improved hinge that allows it to be more flexible, fits really nice and snug, and I really like using this case uh, just to walk around and carry my device with me for just solid protection. Now, I can still use this case to game. Uh, it still feel com feels comfortable enough, and I know that while I'm gaming, if I flip it or it falls, I've got enough bumper protection to protect my interior display. So I definitely like it for that. It might be on the slightly bigger side for some people, but if you're looking for a good protection, this will actually do the job uh, for you. Now, one more thing we definitely have to look at, of course, or actually listen to, is the audio from this device. Now, the Z Fold uh, 4 comes with stereo speakers, and these are two bottom firing speakers on either side, which is great, which means they're definitely louder. So let's go ahead and listen to some game gameplay clips. Round one, beginning the Now, not to worry guys, we also have game streaming services and we all know Xbox Game Pass uh, is on every device. And of course, it runs pretty well on here. Now, I was using my Narcon controller. If you guys wanna check it out, I have a link for you guys down below, but it, it's a great way to actually go ahead and jump in a game. And this works really well as you would expect. So if you just think about game streaming services, Xbox Game Pass works well. 
Now, when you look at this device overall as a, someone who is buying a foldable display and using it for gaming, it works really well because of the larger screen real estate. Now, what are the major improvements from last year? I think the biggest thing, of course, is the processor. The Snapdragon 8, 8 Plus Gen 1 really adds more to it, so better performance for you right there. I like the slightly bigger screen size. It doesn't show as much, but it feels much bigger when you're holding it to play. Uh, and I think that really bodes well for this device. Now, is it something you should jump to to buy from last year specifically for this? Mm, I don't think so. Uh, I think if you have a Z Fold 3 compared to Z Fold 4, you're not gonna feel that much of a difference. Uh, I do like the device, uh, but I think there's just not much there to actually uh, consider. Now, if you definitely wanna pick it up, you can use Samsung's trading offers, which offer some really good deals. And if you have a Z Fold 3, you probably get it for about 700 bucks, which is a good deal if you want to upgrade to the latest version. With that being said, guys, that is all, folks. That is the Z Fold 4 Gaming. Do you like what you see? Do you think it's a huge improvement or do you think it's just rather small? Uh, leave your thoughts down below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.